Well, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm. I am really excited this evening. I just got a package in the mail a couple of days ago. It's something that I have been looking forward to getting and been talking about getting for a long time. And uh, I finally bit the bullet and I went ahead and I bought some electric poultry netting. And I went with Premier One. Um, if you are in this space, then you've probably heard of Premier One. They're kind of like the, the big name in the poultry netting. I did not get the uh, Premier One Plus netting, which is like their, their top of the line Cadillac netting. I just got the, uh, the regular old poultry netting because I just felt like that's what was gonna serve me. And that was what I wanted to be able to afford right now. So I got a 164 foot roll of the poultry netting that comes in both uh, an 82 foot yeah, an 82 foot roll or a 164 foot roll. I got the 164 foot roll. So uh, just a few minutes ago, I got all of my old fencing, all of that old chain link that I have back there. That was like some uh, construction fencing that dad found in a dumpster that we pulled out and we had been using. And you can see right here, this is the, uh, the paddock that where the paddock was that they had been in for about the past month. I don't normally leave it that long but once I went ahead and made the decision that I was gonna get the poultry netting, I got lazy and I did not move it for uh, about a week, week and a half uh, longer than I usually leave it. So I don't know if you can kind of tell. Let me flip the camera around. With this grass out here, you can see this is, this is where they were. You can see distinctly see the, the fence line. This is the other side. You can see how lush and green it is. And I don't know if you can quite tell on the camera, but there is a hard line where the fence was with how well fertilized where they've been versus out here in the rest of the yard. So that stuff really is fertile. It really does make a difference. And with this big 164 foot roll, I'm gonna be able to come off of this side, come way out into the yard and come all the way back to the post on that side and should be able to almost triple the size of, uh, of our chicken yard. So it comes all packaged up. The netting's in this big box here. This is the 164 foot roll. I believe it weighed 26 pounds. I unboxed the uh, Energizer already. I did buy a solar Energizer as well. This is the uh, Solar IntelliShock 60. Uh, so this is a step up from the smallest one they sell. This is the, the in-between one, or maybe there were two more after this. But this, in theory, should be able to power three to five rolls of fence. And they do say in theory because um, stuff like grass growing up into the fencing can affect, um, you know, can cause shorts and affect the, uh, the life of the battery. You know, it will discharge some if there's grass and stuff growing up through the fence. So that's why they do put that... Uh, that little uh, disclaimer in there that it should power three to five, but that's like ideal conditions. It just came in this box here. Did come with this little warning. This was on top of the Energizer when I opened it, so it is not connected. I will have to look at the instructions and get it all connected back before use. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled out here. And this should be plug and play. I should be able to um, take the netting out of the box, unroll it, stick it in the ground, and hook it directly up to the Energizer. That's assuming that the Energizer, I assume it comes with some sort of power on it. It might not be fully charged, but I would think that it comes with some sort of power on it. Should be able to hook the Energizer to it and be ready to go. So I am going to put the drone up and I am hoping to do a time lapse. Uh, it says that it should only take like 10 to 15 minutes to get set up um, from fresh out of the box. So I'll put the drone up, we'll do a time lapse of that, and we will put that to the test. Before we get started, rolling the fence out, we're gonna go ahead and cut the grass short around where I think, around where I think the fence is gonna sit. Just make sure none of that grass comes up and tickles the wires, shorts out our fence, or unduly uses the electric. So not that the grass was very tall, but did go ahead and cut it down short. You can't really even see it, but just cut it down short, maybe like an eight foot wide section all the way down through here. So then at least it won't grow up back to the fences fast either. 
Another thing I will mention about this fence before I stick it in the ground is I did buy the two post or the two prong, I think it was called. Um, basically they make this where it's either just one stud that goes in the ground or they make it where it's the two. I bought the two. I think that was $40 more. I think it was a uh, 169 or 199 no it was 169 or 209 this roll was 209 for the the double prong i just thought that would be a little bit sturdier so that's the one that i went with So that actually was really simple. That took less than 10 minutes. Uh, just did exactly as the instructions suggested. I affixed the first post to something strong, so it's something substantial. So I just tied it with a piece of the string that it came with. I tied it to one of the four by fours down there on the run. And then, as I'm sure you saw in the video, just unfolded it one pleat, one section at a time. Um, kind of rolled it all the way out. Got about the, uh, you know, about this shape that I was after. It actually is a, a little bit bigger than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, guess I could have got out a measuring wheel or something, but uh, it actually is covering more ground than I thought it would, which is awesome because um, the, more, the more green grass that they're on, the better. And then this gives me infinite flexibility that this could be any size or shape or could go off the backside of the coop. You know, could just open one of the walk doors that are in the run, could go off the backside of the coop, do it down that way. Um, yeah, this is just going to provide a bunch of flexibility. Now I'm going to read the instructions on the solar charger and we'll get the solar charger hooked up. So no big surprise, got the energizer hooked up and this was really straightforward also. So uh, we just had our wire connections here. This is our, um, our hot wire coming off to the fence. And then this is our the black. It's our ground wire that is attached to our grounding poles, our grounding spike, I think they called it, that this whole unit is sitting off of, sitting on top of, that's grounded down in the ground. And uh, you can see green. Green is right. Green is good. That means that it's charging. So uh, I'm gonna unhook this real quick, go inside. Let the girls out. So first lesson, uh, definitely turn it off at the Energizer and don't just unhook it. Got my first chalk. So it's working. Ha <laughs> 
just a couple of things that I've noticed here, just like some like first blush reactions. Um, and I read, you know, this was kind of like the big complaint about these, unless you buy like the one that comes with the drivable posts, the posts just aren't that rigid. So I'm already thinking what I might do just at the corners is maybe drive like a T post or something out here, something that I can use some string and tension this back. Cause uh, a little bit of tension here at the end, you know, it stretches it pretty taut down the line. So, you know, if I do here where I'm standing, this corner, maybe one down there, pretty good down there where it's affixed to the coupe. But then maybe again in this corner, if I can do that one also, just get it to lift. There's some spots here, this one down at the end. You can really see it where it's, it's on the ground a little bit. I could even hear it uh, it firing the electric click, click, click. And I'm sure that's because it's uh, it's touching the ground right here. So that's something that I'll definitely address here pretty much right away. But yeah, this is great. I thought I was gonna triple the size of the run. Man, I, I would say that I'm, I'm well past tripled. This is covering a lot more ground than I thought it would, which is awesome. So again, one more time in review, this was the Premier One poultry netting. It was the 48 inch tall variety. So this was the 12 by three by 48, I believe, which is what they call it, which means that they are there are 12 strands coming up from the ground to the top. Um, the holes are three inches wide, and then the 48 is the how tall it is. It's the 48 inch tall variety. Um, at the bottom, it is a smaller mesh hole than it is at the top, which, you know, makes sense. But this was the 164 foot roll. It comes in 82 feet. This version comes in 82 or 164 foot rolls. I got the 164 foot roll. It was $209, like I made mention of earlier. That's because it has the, the two prong spike that goes into the ground. So that was about 30 or $40 more expensive than the single spike. But I thought that was gonna be worth it. So that's what I went for. Um, the Energizer was the IntelliShock. Uh, it was the 60. The 30 was the smallest one. I got the 60. Again, that should power three to five rolls of fencing in ideal conditions. Um, it also came with a, well, I bought it, but I bought a digital tester so I can come out and I can check the fence and see what the voltages are and whether or not it is working and not have to touch it because uh, it got me pretty good when I touched the, the thing over there. That wasn't very smart. That's why you read all the instructions. But... <laughs> So the Energizer was $249. So it was $209 for the fence, $249 for the Energizer, and the digital tester was like another nine bucks, I believe. So all in, I was a little under 500 bucks when it was shipping and everything. Actually, I think it was free shipping because I spent enough, but taxes and everything, I came in just a little bit under 500 bucks. I will most certainly be doing an update video on this, letting you guys know how it works letting you know if anybody jumps the coop. And I did buy the taller version in hopes that uh, I do mostly have heavier breeds, but I do have some lighter breeds. So, you know, they recommend the shorter one for the heavy breeds, the lighter one, the uh, taller one for the lighter breeds, just in terms of how high they can hop. All of my birds are clipped though. So hopefully they want to stay in the fence and it will help a little bit, like I said, when I get these corner posts pulled taut. I think that is enough talking by me for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the fence, uh, something you feel like I didn't mention, go ahead and leave that down in the comments for me. Always love hearing from you guys. Um, if you have any thoughts on something that I should have done a little bit different, if you have this kind of fence, uh, if you think there's something that I could do to make my life a little bit easier, please let me know about that too. If you enjoyed this video, think about hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want more farm content. And until next time, y'all, we will see you.